Since January of 2022, EMA has also been working with electricity retailers and generation companies to help large consumers to secure retail contracts. For example, businesses can now secure one-month fixed price plans and retail contracts with significant fixed price components through the Temporary Electricity Contracting Support Scheme, or TREX. And so far, there's been sufficient supply under TREX to meet demand. EMA has also worked with Samcor Power and Capital Electric to offer long-term fixed price plans for business consumers with an average monthly consumption ranging from 4 megawatt hour to 50 megawatt hour. And these plans range from six months to three years. EMA's efforts ensure that consumers, especially those affected by exiting retailers, can choose from a range of retail contracts to suit their needs. Such longer-term contracts also provide GenCos with more certainty of demand, which allow them to contract for the gas that's needed to serve consumers. Mr. Speaker, energy powers our economy and our society. Given the uncertain global energy situation, EMA will be extending all measures, including tracks, to end June 2022. This will give businesses, especially SMEs, a bit more time to respond to the evolving global energy situation. EMA will continue to monitor the situation and consider extending measures further if necessary to, inter or to introduce new measures if necessary. But as consumers, we must also be prepared mentally to face higher electricity bills over time, especially if the price of oil and gas remains elevated. Singapore is not an energy producer. The government can and will help to smooth out extreme fluctuations in energy prices. But over the longer term, electricity prices will have to reflect the costs of procurement and production. It is not tenable for government to subsidise electricity consumption in Singapore in order to keep domestic electricity prices lower than the global prices which Singapore must pay for energy in the first place. Last week, SP announced that it would be raising regulated tariffs for tariff rates for its consumers by approximately 10%. Those on retail contracts have already started to see higher electricity prices when renewing their contracts. These higher electricity prices reflect the increasing costs of electricity production in this challenging climate and may continue to increase depending on the direction of fuel price movements. The protracted energy crunch has highlighted the need to make our power system more resilient and less susceptible to fuel supply shocks. Since 2014, we have sought to diversify our fuel sources to safeguard our energy security by building an LNG terminal. This allows us to tap gas sources further afield. The LNG terminal has sufficient capacity to meet all of our natural gas needs should PNG be unavailable. In the longer term, we will continue to diversify our energy sources. We will quadruple our solar deployment by 2030 to generate at least 2 gigawatt peak of electricity by 2030. The government has taken the lead in accelerating rooftop solar deployment. One example is the Solar Nova program, which aggregates demand for solar systems across the public sector. We will continue to explore ways to maximise Singapore's solar potential. We also intend to import up to 4 gigawatt of low carbon electricity by 2035. So besides decarbonising the power sector, this will also reduce our reliance on natural gas. Beyond this, we will continue to explore other low-carbon alternatives such as hydrogen, geothermal, and as what MOS uh, Elvin alluded to earlier on, even nuclear energy, which may have the potential to improve our energy security and our energy resilience. 